Hey everyone, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the light sites with Corona Light. First, we're going to learn how to create a basic Corona Light. To do this, navigate to the creation panel on the right. Then click the lights icon. Make sure you select Corona from the drop down list. Here, you will see options for Corona Light and Corona Sun. We're going to click on Corona Light. Now, in your viewport, click and hold the left mouse button, drag to define the size of the light you want, and then release the button. After creating the light, it's important to right click in the viewport. If you don't right click, 3ds Max will keep you in the light creation tool and you will continue placing more light. Okay, we're going to press Ctrl Z to undo the extra light. With the light selected, you can see its properties in the Modify panel. We're going to raise the light up in the scene. As we move it, you can see it update in the interactive render window, casting light in our scene in real time. We're going to set the size of the lights to 30 by 20 centimeters to start. We're going to also place the light close to the darker areas to see the effect. Okay, let's take a look at the light parameters. By default, when you create a corona light, its shape might set to a sphere. I have already created a previous light as a rectangle, so 3ds Max remembers that selection. But if you try to create a light and it comes out as a sphere or other shape, just check the shape parameter here in the Modify panel. We're also going to talk more about the different shapes in a future video about light. First, we have the light intensity settings. This parameter controls how bright the light is. Corona gives us several units to measure light power. The first, and often the most common, is watts. But we also have lumen, candela, and lots. Most of the time, watt is the most used as this is the default option. But there are key differences between these units. Let's start with the first difference. When using watt, the light intensity is directly linked to its size. If we scale this light down, like for example, changing its size in the parameters to let's say 10 by 10, notice how the intensity of the light in the scene also decreases. The light appears weaker. And this brings an important point about changing the size using the main 3ds Max tool. Let's set the size back to 30 by 20 centimeters, and then scale the light using the scale tool. You will see the same visual effect. The light intensity will change, but scaling this way doesn't update the size values you see in the light parameter. It still shows 30 by 20, even though the light is actually much smaller or larger. This can easily get confusing later with more lights, and if you forget, you scale this manually. So one recommendation is that you never scale Corona lights using the viewport scale tool. Always adjust the size using the width, height, and radius values directly in the shape section of the light parameter. Now, let's try the same process, but this time using a different intensity unit, like for example, candela. If we scale the light down, for example, to 20 by 10, we will see the light intensity doesn't change significantly just because we change the size. The light maintains its brightness regardless of the dimensions. So that's the primary difference to understand. Intensity measuring watts is dependent on the light physical size. Each perceived brightness changes as the size changes. The other unit, like candela, lumen, and lutz, maintain a consistent intensity output regardless of the light size. Now, if we switch back to watts, we will see the intensity value itself has updated to reflect the current size and maintain the brightness we saw with candela. So the light is adapting. Let's change the size back to the original 30 by 20 centimeters and set the intensity back to 50. There is another crucial thing we need to notice beside intensity units. The size of the light affects the definition or sharpness of the shadows. Here's the rule. The bigger the light source, the softer and more diffuse the shadow will be. On the other hand, the smaller the light source, the sharper and more defined the shadows will appear. Let's take a look at this. To keep the brightness consistent, while we change the size, we will switch back to Candela again. Now, look at the shadow edges in the render, specifically the fading on this object here. See how soft it looks? We're going to decrease the light size, let's say 10 by 10 centimeters. Watch the shadow edge again. See how much sharper they became. The shadow is now very crisp and defined. So a big part of deciding whether to use a large or a small light in your scene comes down to the kind of shadow sharpness you want to achieve. For example, this very small light is creating a hard shadow, which is good to simulate something like a small spotlight or certain types of interior features. On the other hand, if we make the light much larger, let's try 200 by 100 centimeters. Now look, the shadow is really soft and diffuse. 
This looks more like a light that you will see from a large softbox in a photo studio, or maybe the light coming through a very large window. But also notice that not only the shadows, but also the light wrapping around the objects becomes much softer. Okay, let's quickly look at the difference between two different light sizes side by side. Here, you can see how the shadow definition changes, very sharp with the small light on the left and becoming very diffuse with the large light on the right. So when we are lighting our scene, deciding between using a large or small opening or large or small light can have a big impact on our final renders. All right, this covers the basic of Corona light creation intensity units, and the relationship between light size and shadow sharpness. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.